Hey everyone, Shabby Gamer here, and welcome back to the Universe Mode. This is going to be the first pay-per-view we've seen so far for the CZW roster, so hopefully they can live up to all the expectations. Uh, this will be slightly different to the other pay-per-views I've done, because I'm going to try and stretch it over two days. So basically we've got one card of seven matches tonight, and I will be uploading another one card of seven matches tomorrow. So tonight's card is basically going to be all of the first round matches for the Tournament of Death. Uh, they're all going to be Fatal 4-Way Elimination Extreme Rules matches. So the first one we're going to see will be Taz making his debut, New Jack making his debut, and Sick Nick Mondo also making a debut, and Brian Nobbs is in there as well. The second match is going to be Super Crazy making his debut against Jerry Sags, Just Incredible, and Steve Carino making a, a one-off appearance being borrowed from the Ring of Honor roster. In match three, we're going to see the debut again of Tajiri, Masada, and Joker. And also Raven is going to be in that match as well. Match four, we'll see Drake Younger, the Sandman, Dark Oz, and then a again a return for Rhino. Match five, we'll see Jimmy Havoc, Bam Bam Bigelow, Spike Dudley, and Terry Funk. And in match six, we'll see Solomon Crow versus Cactus Jack versus Tommy Dreamer versus Jimmy Jacobs. And then our main event this evening will be the CZW World Heavyweight Championship match between Dean Ambrose and Bray Wyatt. So without further ado, let's get straight into our first Tournament of Death match. So we are underway here with our first match here in the Tournament of Death. I'll just give you a quick recap on how this is going to work. We've got six first round matches for you tonight. Uh, obviously, the six winners will go through to tomorrow night, and they will face off in three singles matches. The winner of those three singles matches will then go on to the final, which will be a TLC match with the CZW Ultraviolent Underground Championship at stake. So, obviously, all those guys will be itching to try and get their opportunity to, to be the first person to hold that championship in this universe mode. I think it's uh, every single person in this tournament has the potential to be able to go on and do that. We've got a lot of debuts as well. It could be someone completely different that picks up that championship. Someone we've uh, never really seen before could come straight in and just pick up that belt. Great Inseguri by Nick Mondo on New Jack. Great to see Taz finally in this universe mode as well. Not the greatest core in the world, I must admit. His body shape's a bit funny, but still. One of my favourite wrestlers, Taz. As Nick Mondo looks like the first man to go for weapons. And he does, he's got himself a kendo stick. And hits New Jack with the kendo stick. Tournament of Death is finally here. The weapons are being used. That's what we like to see. Well, New Jack reversing, though. Mondo getting hip-tossed on the outside. Now Brian Nobbs going for a weapon as well. Remember this is elimination as well, so it's last man standing. New Jack using a wrestling move, that's not like him. Brian Nobbs has got that baseball bat and hits Taz with that baseball bat in the centre of the ring. And now Nobbs just slamming that baseball back into the back of Taz. Taz is back to his feet though, completely non-selling that. There's a neck breaker by Nick Mond on the outside. Saito suplex by Nobbs on Taz as well. As Nick Mondo just slamming New Jack's face into the turnbuckle post. Nick Mondo straight in now grabs the baseball bat that had been left in there by Brian Nobbs. New Jack takes it off him and uses it against him. And New Jack just slamming that baseball bat into the back of Nick Mondo. But Nick straight back up as well using his kicks. New Jack on his way out looking for a weapon. Nick Mondo follows him though and catches him. Nobbs throws Taz back into the ring. Taz is dropping Nobbs' neck on the top rope there. As Nick Mondo and New Jack still going at it. Taz with the vertical suplex. Mondo's got the ring steps. New Jack comes out. Oh, and I thought New Jack was coming out to meet Mondo, but he actually attacked Taz. Taz just taking New Jack out. 
All four guys now on the outside here. Brian Nobbs locked in a chicken wing that almost hit like a full Nelson from it. It looked like a very strong move, but it's on the outside. Remember, this is Elimination Extreme Rules. However, pinfalls only count in the ring. It's going to be interesting to see who really goes through. I think all the matches are quite well balanced. There's a lot of different styles, and I think no matter who comes out on top, we're going to have a great tournament here. Remember, tomorrow night we do have more non-tournament matches. We're going to have the four-way ladder match for the Wired Championship between Jerry Lynn, RVD, Sabu, and Ricochet. We're also going to see the Wyatt family, uh, Luke Harper and Eric Rowan, defend their tag team championships in an elimination table match against the Dudley Boys. We also may see another Caesar W World Heavyweight Championship match tomorrow as well. Still undecided on that, but I'm sure... I'm sure we'll pull out a great card for you. There's a great Death Valley driver there by Nick Mondo on the outside. But again, pinfalls only count inside the ring. New Jack and Taz are in the ring. Now New Jack makes his way out as Taz gets back to his feet. But New Jack gets the balls back and comes back into the ring. Taz with a great suplex, capturing the arms. Going to go for the pin on New Jack. Will New Jack be the first person eliminated here? One, two, no, only a two count. Taz spinning New Jack round, catches him in that another fantastic suplex, almost like a chicken wing. Then throwing him across the ring. Taz going to go for the pin. Surely that's going to be at one, two, three. And it is. New Jack is eliminated from this Tournament of Death pay-per-view. Taz with the pinfall. And now Taz just attacking Mondo with that kendo stick. Mondo has been busted open. That's what we like to see. We've got some blood here in the Tournament of Death. Neck break on the outside by Nobbs. I must admit, Brian Nobbs is normally a tag team wrestler, but he's doing quite well here in singles competition. As Nick Mondo has just grabbed a replica belt from the crowd and is using it as weapon, catching both of his opponents. Taz now throwing Nobbs into the ring. Taz caught with that replica belt again by Mondo. Mondo trying to make a name for himself here. Pretty new to the deathmatch scene, only a few years in. The guys he's been facing in this match are very much more experienced at it. However, if you've got that sick and twisted side and that sick and twisted side inside yourself, I'm sure he'll be able to easily hold up to the, the pressures here that have been given to him. I will say that a lot of these superstars that are debuting tonight will stay with this roster. I'm having a little bit of a rejig at the moment, trying to strengthen the rosters up as best I can and make them pretty even. As Nick Mondo looked like he was going for something there, but Taz just catches him in the face with the ring steps. Then Nick is back to his feet, and again, Taz just knocking him out with the ring steps. Brian Nobbs is going for the pin. One, two, only a two count. Mondo kicks out. Don't know how Mondo managed to kick out that. He got attacked to them ring steps on several occasions. And now just holding knobs as Taz punches into the stomach. And now it looks like they're working together now, Mondo and and Taz. Well, I spoke too soon as Mondo grabbed Taz and that was a bad idea. Taz using his strength just to throw Mondo. Taz coming off the ropes, Mondo catched him. A great neck breaker. Nobs is back to his feet as well. Mondo goes to the pin on Taz. One, two. Oh, I need a two count. That was very close to Taz being eliminated. I probably said that Taz probably would have been the favourite in this match. Probably the uh, the most experienced and also I think he's held the most championships as well, really. Brian Nobs going for the pin on Taz again. Not even a one count. And Taz has Mondo up in the big, huge suplex. And now, I thought it was signaling for a Taz mission there, but Mondo reverses. Getting away from Taz, but Taz just thrown him straight into the corner with such force that he bounces back. And Taz catches him in that suplex. 
Taz rolling Mondo over for the pin. One, two. Oh, only a two count. Mondo kicks out. What a fantastic start this is to this pay per view. As Mondo just slamming Taz down face first. And before he gets a chance to pin him, Brian Nobbs catches him. There's the bulldog by Nobbs on Taz. Rolls him for the pin again. One, two. Oh, Taz again kicking out on the verge of three. It looks like Mondo and uh, Nobbs are working together on Taz, seeing he's the biggest threat, knowing they need to get him out of this match. And again, only a two count. Taz is kicking out of everything. He gets around the back of Mondo. And there's a great underhook butterfly suplex. But Nobbs just creeping up straight behind Taz and locking in that chicken wing into the full Nelson. Is that going to be all for Taz? I think it has to be. He's taken so much damage and it is. We are down to Brian Nobbs and Nick Mondo. Who is going to make it through to the second round of this tournament of death? Nobbs going for the pin on Mondo here. One, two. I need a two count. Nobbs kicking out. Sorry, uh, Mondo kicking out from Nobbs. Sorry. Nobbs with a back suplex. Brings Mondo to his feet and hits a sit out spine buster straight into the pin. One, two. Three, and that is all. Brian Nobbs makes his way into the second round. I must admit, I was not expecting that. Out of all the guys in the match, I really expected... Well, the last person I was expected to go through was Nobbs. But he did a lot of damage on a lot of people here. Very clever as well, working with Mondo to weaken Taz to a certain point, and obviously it had its good effect. They managed to knock Taz out of this match. And then Brian Nobbs picking up the pieces. The damage had been done early in the match on Mondo. He was busted open pretty early. Lost quite a bit of blood. Obviously tires you quite easily. But Brian Nobbs is going through to tomorrow's semi-finals at least. Who knows, he might even make it through to the finals. But there's a lot of guys left in this competition that will be hoping to knock him off. So we still have five fatal four-way matches. That's 20 more hardcore wrestlers we're going to see today. All gunning for the same prize. But this is a great start for Brian Nobbs. And we are underway with our second match of this Tournament of Death pay-per-view. Who will be joining Brian Nobbs in the second round? Or who will be facing Brian Nobbs in the second round? That's what we'll find out here in this match. We do have Brian Nobbs' uh, long-term long tag team partner, Jerry Sags, in this match. Also got just incredible. We've got the returning Steve Carino and the debuting Super Crazy. I think if you look at momentum, I think just incredible has really been in the best form of recent. Uh, picked up a couple of victories in Extreme Rules matches. One of them was even in, one of them was even in a fatal four-way elimination match like this one. Sorry, that's me uh, slightly burping there. I've been drinking some beer and it's uh, the gas is starting to get to me, I must admit. And it is God Midnight now as well. It's God Midnight and I know I've got at least two or three hours recording left and a couple of hours of editing. I don't think I'm going to go to bed until the, until the sun comes back up, it looks. Just incredible with a bulldog. Just incredible. Looks like he's going to be the first man to go for some weaponry. What's he going to pull out? He's got himself a kendo stick. Oh, Jerry Sags straight away. Just attacking. Just incredible. Before he gets a chance to use that kendo stick, Steve Carino has a table out there with Super Crazy. Super Crazy is just backing away. And as he should do, Steve Carino attacks him with that table. Remember, all of the round two Tournament of Death matches will be singles matches. There will be three singles matches, and they're all going to be extreme rules. But the way to win is to bust your opponent open. That's right. It will be first blood matches. Steve Carino throwing super crazy against the ring post. Then hitting the Saito suplex. Jerry Sags in the ring with just incredible. 
I must admit I was very surprised to see Brian Nobbs win the opening match. I would be incredibly surprised if uh, if uh, Jerry Sags, the, the ever nasty boy, managed to continue that trend. However, it would be interesting to see Brian Nobbs versus Jerry Sags tomorrow night. Super crazy with a standing moonsault on Steve Carino. There's the elbow by Just Incredible. DDT by Super Crazy on Steve Carino. Remember Steve Carino, you can see weekly on the Ring of Honor roster. He's part of the Scum faction alongside Kevin Owens, uh, Corey Graves and Jimmy Jacobs. So we also have Jimmy Jacobs here tonight in the sixth match of the evening. As I must admit, Jerry Sachs is doing a cracking job here against Just Incredible. Rolling him over and I think he's going to lock him into the camel clutch. He does. Super Crazy was going for some sort of springboard there, but Steve Carino is up. Oh, Super Crazy gets the Lucha Libre style diving arm drag. Super Crazy going for the pin from that too. Only a two count. Carino kicks out. Another great springboard move there by Super Crazy. Remember the winner of this year's Tournament of Death is not just to get the uh, get the honour of being called the Tournament of Death champion. They're also going to be handed the new Caesar W Ultra Violent Underground Championship. As I, I think I may have just missed Steve Carino getting uh, eliminated there by Super Crazy. I think I have, yes. There's just so much action going on in the ring at the same time. It's so difficult to keep up, but Steve Carino has been eliminated by Super Crazy. Super Crazy now going to work on Jerry Sags. Just incredible doing a moonwalk. Just incredible is looking for weaponry under the ring. A super crazy and sags lock up in the ring. Just incredible. Found himself a chair. What's he going to do with the chair? He swings it hopelessly. Great move there by Jerry Sags. Just uh, almost like a flapjack. Getting the pin. Only a one count on super crazy. Just incredible, is biding his time with that chair, just waiting for the right moment, and he finds it, hitting Sags in the back with it. Now super crazy, over the top, hitting the. Oh, I thought he hit the elbow, but it looks like Jerry Sags managed to roll out the way. Super crazy is back up though and gets bulldogged face first onto the chair. Sags is outside the ring, searching for weaponry. Super crazy and just incredible now going at it. And it looks like Jerry Sags managed to grab himself a ladder, which is, looking at the frame of the guy, a ladder is not what I was expecting, I must admit. He set the ladder up either way. And now he's pushing the ladder over. I don't think he was quite sure what he was going to do with that ladder. He stood it up, he pushed it over. Now he's walking around with some ring steps. What's he going to do with that? Oh, he uses them effectively. Busting just incredible open. As I said, our second round matches are going to be first blood matches. You can see how easy it is to bust somebody open. Just hits him in the face with them ring steps. Jerry Sags creeping up behind. Just incredible. So difficult in a triple threat situation like this. To keep your attention on both of your opponents at the same time. Just when you're in control of one, the other one pops up behind you. Oh, super crazy. He ran straight in them ring steps. But just incredible. Jerry Sags just wandering around the ring. We could see an all nasty boy second round match tomorrow. However, I'm sure super crazy and just incredible will be hoping that's not the case. Belly to belly slam there by Jerry Sags going for the pin on Super Crazy. One, two. Only a two count. Now gets him up on his shoulders. What's he going to go for here? I want to hit him with that sort of F5 into a cutter. Pinning Super Crazy. One, two, three. Interesting. Jerry Sags eliminates Super Crazy. Oh, and there's just incredible the super kick. Just incredible, the super kick. That's got to be all. One, two, 
Freeing it is. Just incredible. Super kicks his way into the second round to face Brian Nobbs in the first blood match. Here was the finish of Super Crazy. No, it wasn't. This was the earlier match, the, uh, the earlier move, the flapjack. This is where Just Incredible was busted open with his ring steps. Just turned right into them. It was the pin after the move by... No, maybe it wasn't. You go out of nowhere, Just Incredible just hitting the super kick. And that finished Jerry Sags off here. So we now know two of our second round competitors. We know one of our second round matches now. We know that tomorrow we will see Brian Nobbs take on Just Incredible in a first blood match. The winner will go on to the tables, ladders and chairs match to fight for that ultra-violent underground championship. Just Incredible really is in a hot streak of form. And I personally think that he can continue this on and, and pick up that championship. I really do. And we're underway with match three. And in my opinion, one of the most star-studded matches that we're going to see on this card tonight. We have the hardcore legend Raven. We have uh, the Japanese Buzzshaw Tajiri. And we've also got two younger uh, more up and coming deathmatch wrestlers. We have Masada and Joker. However, it looks like Raven's going to be the first person to try and grab himself a weapon. What's he found there? Oh, he's found the ladder. Raven's brought in a ladder into the ring. And there's Masada's drop kicking Tajiri off the apron. As Raven and Joker fight it out over that ladder. And it's Raven who takes the very ladder he brought into the ring to the face by Joker. And there it is again. Joker just knocking Raven flat on his back with that ladder. To Jiri with the back suplex on Masada. Joker's done some serious damage to Raven in this match already with that ladder. I'm not sure if uh, Masada is still wrestling at the moment. I believe he's had some problems with knee injuries. I think it's quite difficult to get insurance as well while you are a deathmatch wrestler as Raven's head bounced straight off that ladder there. It looks like Masada's grabbing himself a weapon. He's got himself a trash can. Whoa, that trash can flew. Tajiri just kicked the trash can straight out of the hands of Masada. Tajiri now on the back of Masada. Masada with the back elbow though. As back in the ring, Joker was dominating Raven, but now makes his way to the outside. Not quite sure where he's going. I think he's assessing the situation. Circling the ring as Joker. Well, he's going to creep up behind Masada, then Masada sneaks back in the ring himself. Joker looks under the ring for some weaponry, and he pulls out a table. As Raven just attacking Tajiri with that chair and now Masada. Masada attacked Tajiri with a ladder but still Tajiri straight back up and hit the springboard moonsault. As Joker brings the table into the ring gets taken off him by Masada though. And Masada setting the table up. And now Joker's got a hold of the ladder. Masada taking the ladder off of Joker now then just slamming Tajiri in the face with the ladder. As Joker puts Raven up against the table. I thought he was going to try and put him through the table. But Raven fought him off. Tajiri now with a ladder. Straight to the face of Masada. And I just slam in the ladder towards the ground that Masada's on as well. And Masada ran straight into the end of that ladder there. Tajiri the kick to the back. Joker now bringing Raven over to that table again. But again Raven just fighting his way from away. Yeah, fighting his way away from the table. So I'm slurring my words a little bit. I've had a couple of beers. And it seems to have taken a little bit of effect on me. Joker catches Tajiri in that sort of snap suplex. Neckbreaker by Joker as well as 
Masada picked Raven up in that backdrop and turned it into a slam. To go for here, Masada has Raven up on his shoulders, but Raven reverses into the reverse DDT. Going for the pin, one, only a one count. Again, any of these four guys in the ring would make a fantastic first ultraviolet underground champion. Jericho pin into Jiri here too. Only a two count. Masada has Raven up on his shoulder. What's he going for here? That's a huge Death Valley driver. And Joker has the Jiri up on the shoulders and hits a Death Valley driver of his own. We could have a double elimination. No, Raven kicks out the Death Valley driver. And now Joker locking in a crossface on Tajiri. Tajiri has to tap it, shouldn't him? Tajiri does tap out. We are down to three. We're down to Joker, Raven, and Masada in this match now. Joker now with a tornado reverse DDT. Tajiri's still grounded. But Joker going for the pin on Raven. Two. Only a two count. Who's going to make it through to tomorrow's second round match? Well, just Joker. Joker just hit a last ride. Joker with the last ride on Raven. That's got to be all two. Three and it is. We are down to Joker and Masada, the two younger members of this match. Joker with a punch to the stomach and there's the knee to the head. Slides out the ring. Looking for some more weapons by the looks of it. What's Joker got planned here? Masada's grabbed the ring steps. And is following Joker. But Joker slides back into the ring. And then the Masada might have to slide the steps in before he can sl slide in himself. And he does. Joker's waiting over the table, but no. Masada has the steps. Joker has the table. Masada dropping the steps and just kicking the table out of Joker's hands. Joker now just throw Masada towards the map, but I think Masada's head actually caught the bottom rope. It's Masada around the back of Joker now. And a back rake. A good old fashioned back rake. Throws Joker into the corner. Follows it up with a running DDT. And now just stomps in the corner. Now just choking Joker out. Gonna go for the pin. One. Only a one count. Very emphatically kicked out by Joker. Joker catches that discus forearm and hits the knee to the face. Catches Masada. Some more knees. Picks Masada up. What's he going for? It looks like a Michinoku driver. No, Masada reverses and gets him up into a tombstone. Masada tombstones Joker. There's the elbow drop to follow up. Is he not going to go for the pin, surely? No, he goes for a second elbow drop as the table in the background starts to float magically. Masada with the vertical suplex now on Joker. As that table starts to have some more fun by itself. And Joker's got Masada up on the shoulders. Looks like he's going to go for the Death Valley driver. And hits it. Surely Joker must be... Oh, I thought Joker was going to go for the pin. But Masada straight back up. The two guys lock up here. Masada twisting the arm of Joker and hitting a clothesline. There's the second. Off the ropes and comes back with that kick. Going to go for the pin. One, two, three. And that's it. Masada goes in to round two. Great victory here for Masada. A true ultra-violent top superstar at the moment. I say at the moment, I think he's having some issues with injuries, but I've seen him quite a lot in CZW in the rec in recent years, and he is probably one of the best deathmatch wrestlers out there, especially in America. If you haven't seen him, you've got to see what he does with the kebab skewers. That's just disgusting, but you can't help but watch every single time. And here we go, match number four of the evening. Unfortunately, we had to cut off Masada's celebration from the last match that was mainly due to crashing reasons but at least we're back here now with episode with them um, sorry with match number four of the episode this of course will be Rhino, Drake Younger, Dark Oz and the Sandman whoever wins this match will go on to face Masada tomorrow in the first blood match in the semi-finals so this is a 
not so much a debut, but it's almost a return for Rhino. He was originally on the CZW roster, but then moved to Ring of Honor to join the Scum formation. But been brought back here for this tournament of death pay-per-view. I'm sure if he wins the championship, he'll be expected to make a few more appearances. However, there's 20 other guys gunning for that championship, so odds are really not in his favour. Sandman and Drake Younger fight on the outside, and Rhino and Dark Oz in the centre. Remember, we've already seen Brian Nobbs, Just Incredible, and Masada make their way through to the second round. Rhino and Dark Oz in the ring now. Rhino just using his strikes. Just throwing Dark Oz into the corner at such a pace that he comes bouncing back. Rhino catches him and power bombs him in the centre of the ring. Now rolls out the ring looking for some weaponry. Can Rhino be the first person to bring weapons into the match? He does while the ladder's out. Oh, and Dark Oz just kicks Rhino to a point where his face slams into that ladder. Sandman there with a belly to belly slam in the middle of the ring. And we all know that Sandman loves a kendo stick. Doesn't get a chance to get one though as Drake Younger stops him. Sandman with a snapmare though. Looks like Dark Oz is looking for some weapons as well. Dark Oz has pulled out a table. The ladder is out over there as well. Remember, the final of this year's Tournament of Death will be a triple threat TLC match. So these guys are getting some experience with the ladders and tables in early. Bit of practice. Dark Oz did slide the table into the ring and now, now he's pulled out a kendo stick as well. And just slaps Rhino on the back with a kendo stick, but Rhino just completely no-sells it. As Sandman has himself a sledgehammer. These guys now just circling the ring. Sandman catches up to Drake Younger and rams that sledgehammer into the stomach. Sandman really doing some damage to Drake Younger with that sledgehammer. Could easily break a rib with the way he's swinging that. Sandman throws Drake into the ring. I think Drake's head actually caught the table as he slid into the ring as well. Drake slides straight back out there to try and meet Sandman. Sandman slides into the ring. And out. And in. Grabs the table. And just throws the table out of the ring. And catches Drake Young with that clothesline. But I think at the same time Dark Oz actually hit Drake Young in the back with that kendo stick. The same kendo stick that Rhino just whacks Dark Oz over the head with. I'm going to have to thesaurus the word whack in a minute to try and figure some more words out. But again, Rhino catches Dark Oz with that kendo stick. Twisting neckbreaker by the Sandman. Rhino just hit a power driver on the outside. Very effective move, but P and Falls only count inside the ring. The Sandman just stripping off the top of the announce table. What's he have planned here? Oh, he has planned nothing as Drake Younger drop kicks Sandman and the force of Sandman flying in the air, sending him through the announce table, but Sandman straight back up and hitting his patented DDT on Drake Younger. Both Drake Younger and Sandman have done some serious damage to each other there. Maybe not the wise maybe not a wise move as uh remember this is elimination. So these guys, even if they eliminate each other, have still got to go through Rhino and Dark Oz as well. Although Rhino is really destroying Dark Oz on the outside. It can't be long before Dark Oz is pinned out of this match. Rhino is up on the apron, makes his way into the ring. Caught by Dark Oz though. Who catches the twist and neck breaker. Sandman going for the pin on Drake Younger. Oh, nearly a free count. Dark Oz going for the pin on Rhino. And that's only a one count. Finally, we have all four men back in the ring. Boot to the chest by Drake Younger on the Sandman. There's a great sort of blue thunder bomb there by Dark Oz on Rhino. Only a two count. Now he gets Rhino up on his shoulders, but Rhino reverses that reverse DDT. P 
pins Dark Oz as Drake gets Sandman up and hits a Drake landing. Drake hits the Drake landing on Sandman. Goes to the pin one, two, three, and is it? Sandman knocked out by Drake Younger. Rhino hit his spinning cutter on Dark Oz as well. And Dark Oz is out. We are down to Rhino versus Drake Younger. The winner will go on to face Masada tomorrow in the semi finals. Rhino gets Drake up and hits her. It's a huge sort of rock bottom style move. Going for the pin. One, two. Only a two count. Drake kicks out. Rhino spinning Drake round. Picks him up on his shoulders and again. Spins him round and hits that cutter. That's got to be all. We're going to see Rhino take on Masada tomorrow. One, two, three. And it is. Rhino moves on to round two. The semi-finals. Where he will face Masada in a first blood match. Some of the early action. Yeah, for this is the dropkick that sent the Sandman through the announce table. Here was a two count. Obviously one of the highlights of the match, a two count. But then Rhino catches Drake there in that spinning cutter. Getting the free count. One, two, three. A very happy Rhino. Like I said earlier, is on loan from the Ring of Honor roster. However, if he does manage to pick up the Ultraviolet Underground Championship, I'm sure a deal is going to have to come to place where he will be here at CZW defending the championship. But he's got to get through Masada first. And a TLC match in the finals. So here we go with match number five of this tournament of death. We have Jimmy Havoc, Spike Dudley, Bam Bam Bigelow and Terry Funk. Now a lot of you out there probably haven't heard of Jimmy Havoc unless you're from the UK. But he is, a, he is an English deathmatch wrestler. Not just deathmatch wrestler, he's a very good technical wrestler as well. Um, the death matches is where he really built his reputation in the UK and Europe. So yeah, give a chance to a, another guy. Try and get his name out there because I know I get a few views from America and so forth. So definitely worth a look if you can find anything on YouTube. Jimmy Havoc going straight for a weapon. Pulls out a table. And catches Bam Bam Bigelow with the table straight away. Spike Dudley creeps up behind Jimmy Havoc. Jimmy fighting Spike away. There's the DDT. Terry Funk pulls out a trash can. But Bam Bam takes it straight out of his hand straight away. Bam Bam picking Terry Funk up. Funk throwing Bam Bam back into the ring though. Spike Dudley's incredibly skinny. That is all. Terry Funk and Alice Spike Dudley. That's a that's a matchup nobody thought they'd ever seen. It's Spike Dudley and Terry Funk. Jimmy Havoc setting the table up. There's Bam Bam just walking on air. Jimmy Havoc thrown into the corner by Bam Bam. And Bam Bam just wearing Jimmy Havoc down with those punches to the face. I was hoping the game might give us a free oh my god moment there. I have seen the game very rarely, computer versus computer, actually do the oh my god moments on their own. Especially, I think, in the last uh, 2K14, I think I had it quite a few times. It was very good. I seem to remember... Um, what was it, 2K14? It might have been this one. I seem to remember doing a match where it was Roman Reigns and... Randy Orton, I think, and uh, Roman Reigns spears Randy Orton through the corner... Which was a which was a great moment as well. Really helped build the match up, and uh, we built a feud from that as well. Jimmy Havoc and Bam Bam fight on the outside now. Havoc did get a chair out, but Bam Bam knocked it out of his hands. There's Terry Funk with a huge clothesline on Spike Dudley. Havoc slides back in the ring with Bam Bam. Bam 
Remember, a lot of these debuting stars will all be staying with this roster. I've had a bit of a rejig and trying to strengthen as much as I can. And I think a few of the guys I want to ECW really be a big help. We may see a few leave ECW in the, in the near future as well. But I'm sure the uh, there's a lot of strength and depth here. Still Terry Funk and Spike fighting on the outside. Bam Bam brings Havoc to his to his feet via his neck. Just trading strikes in the centre of the ring. Headbutt there by Bam Bam Bigelow. Not a huge amount of action in this one at the moment. It seems to be a lot of trade and strikes between the two. But Spike Dudley with that huge running bulldog. I think Terry Funk's head actually hit the, stay, the steps. As Jimmy Havoc fights out of that powerbomb. Terry Funk taking a crutch off a guy in the front row. But Spike attacks him with the ring steps. As Bam Bam catches Jimmy Havoc. Has him up in the butterfly backbreaker. Now rolling Havoc over and he's going to go for the submission. As a knee on the back and just hoisting the neck up. Trying to bend the back in a way it really shouldn't but Havoc fights out. Now catches Bam Bam in that big clothesline. Go for the pin. One. Two. Oh only a two count. That was incredibly close to three. Terry Funk and Spike Dudley still going at it on the outside. Jimmy Havoc showing some of his strength for now as he just picks Bam Bam up and drops him stomach first across the top rope. And I've showed his agility with that springboard over the top splash. So he's going to go for it again. Oh, we tried to catch Bam Bam standing with a crossbody, but Bam Bam slapped him out of the way. Havoc fights his way back into this though. And lock it in that sort of standing Kimura on Bam Bam Bigelow. Bam Bam fighting his way out though, and Terry Funk with a Russian leg sweep on the outside to Spike Dudley. I think Jimmy Havoc is definitely starting to take control of Bam Bam Bigelow in the centre of the ring here. Terry Funk again just demolishing Spike on the outside. Jimmy again misses the springboard splash on Bam Bam who picks Jimmy back up and Irish whips him into the corner. He has him up in the electric chair and drops him down. Again, picks him up by the neck. Looks like he's going to go for the butterfly backbreaker again. And he hits it. And now just slamming the arm of Jimmy into the mat. Picks him back up to the by his neck and hits him with a big clothesline. And now he has him up in the gorilla press. Drops him down. But again, Jimmy Havoc straight back up. Gets hit with the atomic drop now by Bam Bam Bigelow. As Spike starting to get some offense against Terry Funk as well. Jimmy Havoc with a belly to belly slam on Bam Bam Bigelow. Going to go for another splash and hits the cross body style splash. Bam Bam was back on his feet. Havoc going for the pin in the center of the ring. Only a two count. That was very, very close to three. As Spike brings Terry Funk out the neck breaker from the corner. Could this be all? No, he brings Terry Funk back to his feet. And hits another neck breaker. As Bam Bam just really assaulting Jimmy Havoc. Hits that Samoan drop. Terry Funk avoids the splash. And Bam Bam again gets Havoc up. In the butterfly backbreaker too. Only a two count spike stays in. Terry Funk spearing spike in the corner. And there's Bam Bam with that gut buster. I think that could be all. Jimmy Havoc looks down and out. He's taking a lot of damage here from Bam Bam. One, two, three. And it is. Jimmy Havoc has been eliminated here. Jimmy Havoc has been eliminated. We are down to Terry Funk, Spike Dudley and Bam Bam Bigelow. And there's a great sunset flip. Referee very, very slow in getting down. But it doesn't matter because Spike Dudley is eliminated. We are down to Terry Funk and Bam Bam Bigelow here. Who will move on to round two of the Tournament of Death? Bam Bam catches Funk though in that butterfly backbreaker. But Funk fighting his way back to his feet and tripping Bam Bam. 
now working that knee. Might be looking to go for the spinning toe hold at some point. I can't remember if that's the right words. I've had a bit too much alcohol now. Funk with a backbreaker. Just pulling Bama down across his knee. Roll him over, but I think he may have left him on the ground. For, yeah, if, he, if he pinned him straight away, he might have had a chance of getting the victory there, but he left him for a few seconds, and that few seconds was all Bam Bam needed to recover. Funk now bringing Bam Bam back into the ring the hard way. Going straight for the pin. One, two, only a two count. Now Bam Bam throwing Terry Funk into the corner that had the chair set up. The chair was set up. Terry Funk hit it face first. Only a two count though. Terry Funk fights out. And there's Bam Bam with a big head, but Now it's Terry Funk up in the vertical suplex. Terry's busted open. Bam Bam hits that vertical suplex. And again, just picking Terry Funk up by the neck. Has him up on his shoulder. There's the gut buster. That has got to be all. One, two, three. And it is Bam Bam Bigelow will go on to the semi-final matchups on day two of the Tournament of Death. And this was the uh, big clothesline there by Jimmy Havoc. And there was another clothesline there, but... The, the re I know I've said it in a few of my videos before, but the replays on this game are really piss poor. They really are. <laughs> well, there's the vertical suplex, which uh, finished the match off, more or less. And the free count. Bam Bam Bigelow goes on to the semi-finals. But who will he face in the semi-finals? We'll find out in the final first round match this evening, the next match. So here we are, we have match number six and the final first round match of the Tournament of Death. We have in this one for you Cactus Jack, Tommy Dreamer, Jimmy Jacobs and Solomon Crow. Back elbow by Cactus. Now has Dreamer in the headlock and another back elbow. Again, we do have Jimmy Jacobs here for this event. Uh, borrowed him from the Ring of Honor roster. Again, part of the scum formation, as is Rhino and, and uh, Steve Carino we've seen earlier. Rhino doing very well actually winning his match. So we'll see him tomorrow. Can Jimmy Jacobs also pull off a victory? It's a great little move there by Jacobs, who's the first person to... First person to go weaponry hunting. And pulls out a ladder. But Solomon Crow... Grow. Yeah, yeah, Solomon Crow. Solomon Crow catches him. Jacobs with the elbow. Crow fights his way back to his feet and hits that shoulder block. The way this match is split up, we've got the two more experienced wrestlers in this uh, in this style of match. We've got Tommy Dreamer and Cactus Jack grouping up and we've got the two not so experienced guys in the Jimmy Jacobs and Solomon Crow. They both are very much capable of being in this type of match, don't get me wrong, but Tommy Dreamer and Cactus Jack have got about 20 years experience in this sort of match. They know how to pick somebody's body apart and destroy it with any weapon that's available. Jimmy Jacobs went to hit Solomon Crow with a chair. Then Crow takes the chair off of Jacobs and then just whacks him in the back while Jacobs was looking for another weapon. Now Crow just repeated blows to the back of Jacobs who no sells him and gets straight back up again. Russian leg sweep by Jimmy Jacobs. Great DDT there by Jimmy Jacobs was almost spiked as well. And now a head scissors by Jimmy Jacobs. Bulldog there by Tommy Dreamer. Solomon Crow just throwing Jacobs into the into the barricades, but Jacobs fights his way back out with the boots of the stomach. Great suplex there by Tommy Dreamer. Another head scissors by Jimmy Jacobs as well. Jacobs again hunting for more weaponry. 
Doesn't seem to have to find what he's looking for though, but catches Solomon Crow in the front chancery and then throws him into the ring. Tommy Dreamer now. Looked like he was trying to grab a table out. Cactus Jack is just pacing like an animal. Back and forth, not quite sure what he's up to, but Tommy Dreamer has the trash can. I'm pretty sure Cactus is soon to find it. Oh, Cactus steals the trash can. Solomon Crow with that spinning forearm. Going to go for the pin on Jimmy Jacobs early in the match too. Three and it is. Jimmy Jacobs has been eliminated from this match pretty early on by Solomon Crow. <coughs> we are down to three now. Tommy Dreamer, Cactus Jack and Solomon Crow. Solomon brings Cactus back to his feet and throws him into the steps. Tommy Dreamer's taking a bit of a breather now, letting Cactus and Solomon go at it. Dreamer's gone weapon refinding. Weapon refinding? He's searching. He's found himself a chair. Solomon Crow's found himself. Cactus Jack and hits him in that double arm DDT. Cactus' own finishing maneuver. One, two. Oh, only a two count. Cactus Jack kicks out from that double arm DDT. And now Tommy Dreamer comes sprinting across the ring with that chair. Just slamming Sammy Callahan, otherwise known as Solomon Crow, in the face with the chair. And now just a hip toss on the chair as well. Go for the pin. One, two, three, and that's it. Solomon Crow has been eliminated by Tommy Dreamer, got the final pin. But it was a hip toss onto the chair that I think finally finished him off. As Cactus now trying to lock in a submission. Fantastic submission by Cactus Jack here on Terry. For, um, on Tommy Dreamer. Breaks a hold. Don't think he could hold it for as long as he wanted to. Dreamer there with a the DDT. Great reversal. Now grabbing the chair. Oh, and just slamming the chair into the grouted Cactus Jack before setting it up in the corner. And the Irish whips him into a different corner. Spins him round. Again, spins him round. And Irish whips him into the chair that he just set up. Cactus goes down like a heap of spuds. Funk. Dreamer, sorry, goes to the pin. Not even a one count, really. Cactus has got the manual claw. It's the manual claw. Dreamer's down. That's got to be all. One, two, three. Oh, I need two count. Dreamer kicks out. How did Dreamer kick out? Cactus now sets Dreamer up on the send middle rope and comes back and uses his entire body weight to crush Dreamer's neck across that middle rope. As Cactus nips out the ring and grabs the ladder, slides the ladder in. Enough time to pick the ladder back up, but Dreamer with a back elbow knocking the ladder out of his hand. Back elbow by Cactus Jack. Thrown Funk into the corner with such force that he bounces back. Now an elbow to the back of the head. Another elbow to the middle of the back. Dreamer's got Cactus up. Looks like he's going to go for the Dreamer driver. He hits it. He hits the Death Valley driver. Rolls Cactus over for the pin. One, two, three. And that is all. Tommy Dreamer goes through to round two. Of the Tournament of Death. And there was that hip toss onto the ta onto the chair, sorry, that finally finished off Solomon Crow. And there was the DDT. Looked like uh, Tommy Dreamer was reversing something. This was the pin straight from the manual claw. And then up in the Dreamer Driver. And that finished Cactus Jack off for this one. One, two, three. So now we know all of our six semi-finalists. We're going to see Brian Nobbs take on Just Incredible. Masada take on Rhino. And Bam Bam Bigelow take on Tommy Dreamer. The three winners will go on to face off in a TLC match with a new CZW Ultraviolent Underground Championship dangling from above the ring. 
But that is not all we have for you tonight. Don't forget we still have Dean Ambrose defending the CZW Championship against Bray Wyatt. So stay tuned for that one. The following match is scheduled for one fall. And it is for the Combat Zone Wrestling World Heavyweight Championship. And we are underway, and this has been a feud that's been growing now for a, about seven weeks' time. Um, since the beginning of the Universe Mode, Bray Wyatt and Dean Ambrose have been at it. Yeah, in the past few weeks, Dean Ambrose, the CZW champion, has, has actually lost to all three members of the Wyatt family in singles competition. Be definitely hoping to to turn the tables around tonight. And as I said in those episodes, it may have been Luke Harper and it may have been Eric Rowan in the ring with Dean Ambrose, but I'm pretty sure it was Bray Wyatt who was in the head of Ambrose the whole way through. But this is his first real championship defense. There's a very good chance that it will be defended again tomorrow night. Nothing's been confirmed yet. I think a lot of it will depend on the result of tonight's match. There's Dean Ambrose there with a great tornado DDT. As you can see, Luke Harper and Eric Rowan were both banned from ringside for this match as well. So we try and keep it as a, as even as possible. This is also an Extreme Rules matchup, so weapons are allowed as well, and there's no countouts. Great crossbody by Bray Wyatt. Slides out the ring. Looked like he was going for a weapon, but Dean Ambrose caught him. Referee standing right in the way of all the action. We see Dean Ambrose just twisting the arm of Bray Wyatt and Bray throwing Dean into the corner of the barricade. Steel barricade as well. Now follows it up with... Oh, just throwing him in that scoop slam. Onto that, you can see how thick that matting is really, can't you? There's, there's barely anything to it. Ambrose... Throwing Wyatt into the ring though and hit with the elbow across the chest. Bray's back on the apron. Sorry, Dean's back on the apron, back into the ring. Bray was there waiting for him. Gets hit with the spine buster by Dean Ambrose. Oh, that was a low blow. Is the referee not going to... As I said, the referee not going to give that, but of course not. It's a no disqualification. Bray Wyatt with a low blow on Dean Ambrose. Helps him gain the momentum. Now looking for a weapon under the ring. But Dean managed to block him off before he had a chance to pull one out. Another boot to the stomach by Bray Wyatt. Ambrose thrown Wyatt into the ring and hit him again with an elbow across the chest. Slides in the ring to meet him. There he is with a neck breaker. If anyone doesn't know, Dean Ambrose was originally in CZW. That's where he came from before he joined the WWE. He was CZW's John Moxley. Also won, if I remember correctly, I think he actually won a tournament of death. He was definitely the Ultraviolet Underground Champion at some point. He was also the CZW World Champion as well. So he's a, he really dominated the CZW brand for a couple of years. Before the WWE saw just what a talent he was and... Again, he's showing this by locking in this incredible submission. There's not a part of the body of Bray Wyatt that's not currently in pain. It took a lot of energy, though, for Dean Ambrose to lock that submission in, so he had to break it. Ambrose is having a much better time in this match has he than he has been over the past few, well, the past seven weeks against Bray Wyatt. So, Bray... Bray's managed to get himself a kendo stick, but Dean Ambrose just kicks him straight in the stomach and he drops the kendo stick. Again, repeated kicks the stomach. Both guys circling that kendo stick, neither wanting to bend down and pick it up. Bray went for it and Dean Ambrose started hitting him with the kicks. Boot to the stomach by Bray now as well. These guys locking up on the outside of the ring. Dean comes out on top. What's he going to go for? He's picked him up with that twisting suplex. Bray Wyatt's back hits that thin matting on the outside. 
And our power bomb by Dean Ambrose on the outside again. Dean starting to take control. Can they go for a second power bomb? He does. It's a second power bomb on the outside of the ring. But Bray's back up. This guy's a monster. He's an animal. Just hops straight back to his feet. And hits that crossbody. When a man of that size comes hitting you with a crossbody, you certainly know about it. If you do hear some strange squeaking, by the way, it is my computer chair. It needs a good oiling, I think. Again, it only costs £3 from a charity shop, so I can't complain too much. Dean Ambrose with the elbow to the back of the neck of Bray Wyatt. Now searching in the ring for a weapon of his own, but Bray comes out to meet him. Catching us, throws Ambrose back into the ring. Going to roll him over for a pin here. One. Only a one count and barely that, really. Dean with a huge punch to the face of Bray, knocking him down. Just a big boot to the chest. On the ground at Bray Wyatt, going for the pin. One, two, only a two count. And Ambrose hits the Dirty Deeds out of nowhere. Ambrose hits the Dirty Deeds. One, two, three, and that's it. Dean Ambrose defends his Caesar W Championship against Bray Wyatt here on day one of the Tournament of Death pay-per-view. There was that spine buster pretty early on in the match, really. This was the second powerbomb on the outside on Dean Ambrose as well. The pinfall, one, two, only a two count from that one. But then hits the Dirty Deeds out of nowhere. Rolls Bray over for the three count. One, two, three. So Dean Ambrose successfully defends the Combat Zone Wrestling World Heavyweight Championship. We're pretty sure he is going to defend again tomorrow. You'll have to chew in to find out who that's going to be against. But remember, tomorrow's card, we'll, we'll see all three semi-final matches. Brian Nobbs, Just Incredible, Masada, Rhino, and Bam Bam Bigelow versus Tommy Dreamer. We've also got the Caesar W Tag Team Championships being defended in Elimination Tables match, which will be the Wyatt family, Luke Harper, and Eric Rowan taking on the Dudley Boys. We'll also see Jerry Lynn defend his Wired Championship against RBD, Sabu and Ricochet. We will see Dean Ambrose defend his World Heavyweight Championship. Who against? We've not been told as yet. And then our main event will be the Ultra Violent Underground Championship ladder match. Also the Tournament of Death final. So that's, uh, yeah, that's tomorrow's card so be sure to tune in for that. Uh, yeah, I've been Shabby Gamer. Thank you very much for watching and goodbye. <laughs>